Okay, everybody, over the next four episodes, I'm going to be going over these main four windows, over your project window, your source window, your timeline window, and your program window. This episode is dedicated to the project window. So I'm going to hit Shift-1 to select the project window. I'm going to hover my mouse over it and hit tilde. I already have a bunch of footage in here. So I kind of want to just quickly, I know we've covered this, but just quickly, I want to quickly refresh folder creation and organization. Right now I've imported a bunch of just kind of footage. I've got some red footage in here, some uh, video footage, and some uh, and some audio footage. I want to show you the difference between these icons right here. If you look closely at this icon right here, this one has a little film strip and a little waveform right there. This means that that is a video clip. The film strip means it's a video clip, and the little waveform means it has audio attached to it. This was shot on a red. The audio wasn't really recorded, but it does actually have an audio track that belongs to it, even though you can't hear anything on it. Which is fine. As I move down here, I'm going to so we scroll down, we'll see these ones here were actually video clips that were shot in slow motion and red cameras shoot slow motion without sound. So this is actually just a video clip with no sound attached. So this one is film, like video and audio together in a LinkedIn one file. This is a just a video clip. And then as we move down here further, this is a just a audio waveform. That is an audio file. So we have video attached to audio. Just video and audio. So those are the different icons. They, they, you'll, get, you'll get different icons with you as you bring in different media like PNGs and JPEGs and whatnot. But those are some, some of the main ones right there. But I've imported, so I've got a big mass of clips in here. Just a quick refresher on this. I'm going to grab all my video footage here. Uh, actually, let me grab, I'm going to, going to select the top one here. I'm going to scroll up, select the top one, scroll down, hold down Shift and select everything in between. I want to drag those into a folder right there. I'm going to grab that and drag it down to this little icon. Uh, but by the way, I am in tilde mode right now, so this is kind of full screen, but this is still just the project window. I'm going to hover over this little folder icon I'm in the bottom right hand corner of the project window. You let go, it will grab all those files and put them into this one folder. And it's highlighted, ready for me to name it, so I can just call this red footage. There we go. And I've got actually a little bit more. I collapse that there, so and I'm going to grab s some more right here. I'm going to accidentally grab one of these clips that doesn't belong in that folder. I'm going to grab that, drag it in and drop it into that folder. And then I'm going to go and grab these slow motion ones, drag and drop over a folder and call this slow mo, because those are slow motion files. I'm just showing you how to do basic organization here. Let me grab my audio, all my audio there, drag it, hold it over, and we'll title this audio. So I've got an audio folder, I've got my main red footage folder, and I've got slow mo. Look how much this cleaned up. But I notice as I arrow down on my red footage that I have one file here that shouldn't have been in there. Uh, that I actually need to get that into the slow mo folder. A couple ways of doing that. First of all, I'm going to grab that, drag it over like this, hover over that till it highlights, let go, and it just dropped it into that folder and moved it. Uh, another way of doing that is you can cut, copy, and paste as well. You can select that, do Control or Command X if you're on a Mac, and that will cut. I'm going to double click on my slow-mo folder and command V and paste and it pasted it in there. So another way of getting it in there. Uh, another way of moving folder or files, another way of moving files is say I just want to get this out of that folder that it's in. Right now it's in this red footage folder and I just want to get that out. All you have to do is grab it, you drag it to the left. Notice how it has this little icon on it. Let me zoom up here. Notice how it has this little icon on it as I start dragging. It's got this little uh, no symbol on it, a little circle with a cross through it there. That means nothing's happening right now, but if you drag it far enough to the left, suddenly that disappears right there. And I'd say be sure to drag it directly to the left, not up or down or anything. Just drag it directly to the left, let go, and let's take a look at what happened. Actually, just grab that and pull it out of the folder. So if you need to pull something out of the folder, grab it, drag it left, let go, and it drops it out of the folder. So now I can grab that. Let me collapse this and put it in the proper folder in my slow-mo folder. So that's just a quick refresher on organization, which we've already been through. Uh, I want to show a couple little items here. Any clip that I select here, I want you to notice this area right here. What it will do is it will show a thumbnail from the clip, and it will show a few different items here. By the way, if this is not showing up, if this is not showing up and there's nothing there, click on this little t this little rough tab here on the edge of the project w window demo. This is a little menu drop down, and you just have to check mark preview area. Preview area will uh, turn that on or off. Sometimes that's turned off accidentally. If you don't, if you want that on, go to this, say preview area, and then it will show a little bit of information here, basic information about any clip that you select 
down in this, not just Clint, but any item, that any asset that you select down here will show the basic information for it right here. Some things that it shows, especially, first of all, of course, the name. It shows a thumbnail of the image. You can actually click play, and it will play through the footage. Skim through the footage, and you can look at it. Anyway, it shows that this is a movie file here. It shows that audio belongs to it as well, that there's audio connected to it. It's a two-channel, two mono channels are connected to it that are at 48,000 uh, hertz which is the quality. This is basically a little bit better than um, than CD quality and 16-bit, which is really good bit depth. Um, if you're going to have cinema audio, you're going to need at least 48,000 hertz, 24-bit. If you're going to get kind of cinema, cinema quality audio. It's pretty uh, irrelevant here because uh, I'm not using the audio on these red files. Anyway, so up here we've got a couple other points of information. We have resolution. First of all, this 3840 by 20 by 2160 is the resolution. Typical HD files might be 1920 by 1080. 1920 by 1080 might be a typical resolution that you get with a HD video, but here this is red. This is almost 4K. This, this is for all intents and purposes called 4K footage, but it's a little bit less than. It is 3840 by 2160. If we double click on this file and load it into the source monitor here, that basically means that for every that basically means that we have 3840 pixels across and we have 2160 pixels up and down. That's the resolution. And if you want your aspect ratio there, you basically divide 3840 by 2160. We get to a deeper lesson on this in a later episode, but 3840 divided by 2160 equals this is a 1.78 aspect ratio. 1.78 aspect ratio, if you round that up there, which basically is a 16 by 9, what we also commonly refer to as a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Same aspect ratio as 1920 by 1080. If you divide that, you'll get the same number. Uh, cinema aspect ratio starts at 1.8. 1.89 actually, and as you go up higher, you can go to 2 to 1, you can go, and th this is actually simplified. What 1.77 is, 1.78, is basically uh, simplified from 3840 by 2160 down to 1.77 to 1. It's simplified down to 1. So for every 1.77 pixels uh, across, you have 1 pixel up and down. A couple other items we have here. This is your pixel aspect ratio. This is becoming less and less relevant because pretty much everything that we shoot in now is a 1.0 pixel aspect ratio. In the earlier days of DV and HDV, uh, they would use a stretch pixel aspect ratio, which was around like 0.8 to 0.9 thereabouts, uh, which gave you, actually some of them went down to like 0.7 if I, if I remember right. And uh, that's what was basically like a stretch pixel. It was not a square pixel, and they were trying to get more information stretching it across more resolution to make it look like it was higher quality when, when they were using older formats like DV tapes to put more information onto and try to get higher quality out of those DV tapes. Uh, then you have a duration right there, and you have a frame rate. I'm not going to go into drop frame versus dr uh, non-drop frame right now, but the reason why this came across was uh, dealing with earlier television sets with the scan rate, with the uh, something with the the frequency going into the into the walls, into the plug. The power that was coming out was cycling at 60 hertz basically, and the 30 frame per second drop frame. And actually, when they added a color channel, there's a whole history on that to why they did the drop frame to get it to meet the the scanning of the television where it didn't warp or change shape. So that, that's basically what drop frame is. But it's pretty standard in broadcast. It has remained standard in broadcast these days. This is essentially 24 frames per second, but it's drop frame. We'll get into this and explain it later on when we're editing. And progressive scan is a mode of scanning that s simulates film. Uh, the way film is scanned instead of old television video signals. We'll get into that as well. But this is your basic information for your clip right there and your audio information. And this is the preview window. Okay, a couple things down here at the bottom of our window. We've got these two little icons right here. We've got our list view and icon view. If we put this in icon view, it shows this as uh, actual icons. Right now we're not seeing, we're just seeing these big icon folders here because we're not looking at the footage yet. I usually keep my project window in the list view, and when I double click on a folder or Alt double click or Option double click, it'll open up a tab, an individual tab, a separate tab from our project window. Now this is just the bin here of our red footage. Go down and hit our icon view and it changes this to these icons, to these thumbnails. And if I tilt over this, go full screen, you can grab this little slider down here and move this larger or smaller. And another little thing you can do to preview footage is you can hover your mouse over this and move it left or right. I'm not clicking or anything. I am just grabbing, I'm just hovering my mouse over and moving it left and right and it will skim. 
it will skim through the clip. Okay, I'm going to tilde back here, hit tilde again. Now, one thing I want you to notice is up here, you've got uh, my project window seems to have disappeared. It's actually not gone, it just can't fit up here in all these tabs here. So, what I'm going to do is click on this little arrow here. This is one thing they've changed for 2015. There used to be a little scroll bar up here to scroll between the windows. Now it's this little arrow tab. You click on that, and it'll show other windows that aren't displaying up here. You can hit project window. There it is, and I've already shown how to do this. I'm going to grab my project window, drag it to the left, and get it closer to my bin window right here. So they're they're next to each other. And that kind of operates in a little bit better without having to scroll back and forth. Or you can actually grab this and drag it over like that and it will display more of those windows. And there you go. Down here at the bottom right hand, there's a few right hand corner, there's a few things I want to go over. Th this automated sequence is having to deal with uh, taking a bunch of still images and put them to one sequence. We're not going to cover that right now. This is your little find tool for help. It's a kind of an advanced search tool. You have your basic search tool up here to just type in a name. And if you're trying to find a name, I know I got audio files in here named mono. I'm going to type in mono. It'll bring up all the files with the word mono in it. If you know a specific file that you're trying to look, 004, it'll bring up just the items with 004. Uh, in, in the window there. Down in this little search window here, it'll bring up more of a detailed search. So if you're looking for things with uh, any sort of like frame rate or if you're really looking for a very specific, if you've done things with, with color, we'll get into this later on as far as searching and, 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 uh, and making things different colors in here and that you can search for them quite easily. So. If you pull down on these columns, it'll show various things that you can search for. You can search for video endpoints and media search and frame rates and everything else. And it will narrow those things down in your uh, project window. This is to create a new folder. If you're creating bins, you can select that. It'll select and it'll create a new folder. You can rename those. Uh, control sl uh, forward slash is another way of doing that for your shortcut. Uh, and this is a new item icon. Uh, you click on that, it's going to bring up a list of new items you can create. New sequence for your timelines, you can make as many timelines as you want. Uh, adjustment layers, we'll get into these. Titles for making titles. New bars and tone for sending to broadcast stations. New black video clips, color mats, a whole bunch of generators in here uh, that we'll cover in later episodes. Uh, and there's also a trash can if you want to delete folders or files, you can click right there and it will delete. I'm going to undo that. And then also in this first window area here, you do ha you will have, like I mentioned, you'll have bin folders if you open up, if you alter, option, double click, you have your history, which is your undo list. You can undo a whole bunch of moves at once just by clicking up there. These are all the undos. I've already covered this in a previous episode. Uh, markers, effects, information, media browser to import, and I've already covered that in a previous episode. So the next episode, we will be covering the source window, and this is really where the editing starts. And we will be showing you some very important editing uh, shortcuts that uh, professional editors use all the time just in the source window that will also relate to the timeline and program window.